need some help? Huh. You look like you could use some. No, no, I'm fine. My, this is all temporary. It doesn't look very temporary. No, see, I am going to use Notion. And once I get that started, this is all going to go away. There's not going to be any more clutter. And how's that going for you? If you clicked on this video, I'm assuming your Notion journey has looked a little something like this. Wow, so many pretty workspaces to take inspiration from. Okay, this is a little bit harder than I thought. All right, let's go back to the basics. Man, this is still confusing. Hey, it's Wesleyana. Welcome back to the channel, or welcome if you're new here. You may or may not already know me from my very intense Notion organizing videos. And as much as I would love to sit down and teach you step by step on how to get to that level, this shit's hard, okay? It took me two years of tinkering and experimenting to get my notion to where it is today. So instead of throwing you off the deep end, I thought we could take a step back or many steps back and start from the beginning. Because if you're a beginner, there's no worse way to start off your notion journey than by throwing your laptop out the window out of frustration. Now what exactly is Notion in the first place? At its core, it's really just a very flexible productivity and note-taking app with a lot of really great database functions. So think Excel meets Evernote meets a WYSIWYG web page builder. And the reason it's so hard to get started or really wrap your head around the whole idea of Notion in the first place is because of its flexibility. We're mostly used to productivity apps that have some semblance of structure. Think Asana or ClickUp or Todoist, which all have very strict parameters that limit what you can do. So you're really only focusing on the content and not so much the structure of the system itself. So then why use Notion in the first place if it brings all this complexity to the the table. So Notion is really best reserved for situations where you want to create your own wiki or dashboard and essentially build your own content first website. So you could do this with school, with work, uh, if you run a small business, those are all great opportunities to use Notion. Now because of how customizable Notion is, it is very easy to spend more time working on it than in it. Like this was literally me at the end of 2021 for three weeks of my life. I'm not kidding. Not to say that aesthetics aren't important, but they don't matter if the thing that you're working on doesn't actually work for you on a day-to-day -day basis. It's like trying to drive a Ferrari with the engine missing. And that is why we are going to take this handy dandy tool here, set it to 10 minutes, and show you how you can get off the ground without spending weeks setting up your first Notion. Do as I say, not as I do. When you first open Notion, you're gonna get a blank page with a title and then a couple different options to get started. We're just gonna start with an empty page. Okay, so timer is started and we can call this Wesley's dashboard. Let's add a little bit of fun stuff. There are some different like icons you can use, emojis, you can also add in your custom icons. I'm just gonna go through and add this. Looks good enough to me. You can also add a cover to your pages. So if you click add cover, you just click change cover here. There's different preset graphics and colors you can use. You can upload your own image, link to an image on the web, or you can use Unsplash. So I think I'm actually going to use my own image from my Notion library. Hmm. I'm gonna spend all of my time trying to make this look nice, even though I said I wasn't going to. Again, do as I say and not as I do. You can see I've added this picture and I wanna move it so you can click reposition and drag this around, which is really nice. I think this is pretty cute, so we're gonna go with this. Um, next, when you click into this Notion page, you're gonna see two different icons here. This plus is to create a block, so text, database, image, anything can be created with a plus sign. You can also use a slash. And then these little buttons, I guess they're called buttons, dots, whatever, 
Um, they give you different options to kind of like delete, duplicate, whatever. You can also use this to move it around eventually once we have more blocks. So first, I like putting a quote at the top for inspiration. So I'm gonna do a call out, which is this little gray box. And you can see it's just automatically giving me space to put in more commands here. Before we go too far, I want to go into here and make this small text and make this full width. Just some different options for your page here on the side. Um, okay, so we're gonna go back into here and I'm going to create a database. And I want that database to be a gallery view. We're gonna make that new. And I'm gonna call this my notebook. So any type of pages or collections, if you do bullet journaling, um, this could be like fitness, recipes, reading list, goals, wish list. You get the idea. Just like anything that you wanna make notes on make a page for we're gonna put that in here and I think I'm also going to put an image here let's see um, let's put this girl I like her so we can also add an image I just copied and pasted that now you can actually put these side by side into columns. I don't know why I can't ever do this. This is so hard for me. Um, no, that is incorrect. Okay, there we go. And now if you want to, let's see, let me delete this. You can go through and make this any different size you want. I'm gonna have it take up most of this page, make this girl a little bit bigger. And now I'm probably gonna create a navigation here. Let's see, we're gonna create a header. So let's go for like an H2 navigation and you can create a page as well. So I'm gonna make a page for like work. Um, Make this a little faster. School, finances, habits, and we can create like a journal. I'm not actually going to go through and you know make all of these, but I'm just kind of showing you the different options. Okay, turn to a page inside Wesley, Wesley's dashboard. So that's just kind of a quick way to do that. Um, we can also go through and create like different icons for these to make it look a little nicer. Okay. So now you can see whatever type of area of life you wanna have in here, we can create that under the notebook area, under the navigation. You can kind of decide what works best for you. Um, I'm also gonna get rid of this name because I don't like it when it says the gallery names. I think this looks a little nicer. And let's create a weekly to do area so we can have our tasks on our dashboard. Um, I created a little line there just by pressing the dash a couple times. You can also create it as a block. Now we're going to go through and do a heading for like Monday. If you do a colon, you can search for emojis. So I'm going to get that little clock emoji and we're going to have events here and reminders. And then I'm going to add a to-do list. So to-do, to-do, to-do. And if we want to make this look a little nicer, we can add a background. So now I'm going to take this whole block section and I'm going to copy that and paste it. And I'm going to go over here and we're gonna just make our columns this way. So I'm gonna do maybe four on each side. You actually need to come up here. I'll create this as 
Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and I'm just doing Command C, Command V, just typical shortcuts on a computer. Saturday, Sunday, and then get rid of this and add another image. Let's see. Let's add this girl again, because I like her. There we go. That's nice. So now you have your weekly to-do calendar that you can just kind of clear and redo every week. So if you have events like Sarah's birthday, just to remind yourself. And for reminders, subscribe to Wesley Anna's YouTube. All right, so then going down here, I'm going to create us a calendar as well. So we're gonna go here and there's actually a database calendar view already. You can do a new database, ready to go. So calendar, anytime you wanna add an event, Sarah's birthday, easy. And there you go, I mean that was, pretty fast setting this up. I didn't have to go through a bunch of crazy tutorials and templates. Um, you know, I think it looks pretty nice for what it is without getting too carried away. Yeah, so from here, I would say you should just go and add in some templates. You can find all the templates on the side here that people have created for Notion. Um, probably Google some as well. But they already have like a reading list in here, a habit tracker, travel planner, all this stuff is kind of already done for you. So I would honestly suggest creating pages based off of those to start and then kind of tweaking them as time goes on to fit your needs. Now I'm just gonna end with a couple tips that could help make your Notion journey a little less stressful. Starting with number one, you should pick a base structure that works for you. So that can be anything from para to getting things done. You can use the Zettelkasten system if you take a lot of notes, or you could even just take your bullet journal and apply that digitally. But starting with a system is gonna be a lot easier to build from than trying to create something from scratch. And number two, I really, really highly suggest starting simple and building complexity over time. I think a lot of people get wrapped up in trying to create their entire system all at once and that is where they get overwhelmed or they make mistakes or they abandon it completely after spending weeks setting it up because they realize that they either didn't need that complexity or they're building pages that they actually weren't going to use in the future. So starting with just the basics and the core, which could be your task management, your note taking, journaling, whatever really is important to you on a day-to-day -day basis, start there and add all of the cool widgets and fun graphics and crazy pages and all this functionality later on as you need it. And going off of this, I think templates are a really great place to start. Of course, building your own custom structure is always going to be better, especially at the beginning of the process when you're not really sure what you need. I do think it's better to go in and take what has already been created rather than reinventing the wheel. Now, number three, listen to me. We are not going to import all of our information into Notion at once. So when you start building your Notion, you're gonna have this temptation to take everything from all these other apps and try and retrofit it. And that is a huge mistake because not everything is going to be fit for Notion. Of course, you can build out your book trackers and your fitness trackers and your calendars. There's gonna be ways to do everything, but it might not necessarily fit your workflow. So for example, I still track a lot of my bookmarks in Evernote. I do all of my journaling in either day one or on a physical journal. And if I had gone through at the beginning and moved all of these onto Notion and spent weeks doing that and then realized that I didn't like that in the first place, then I would have just wasted all this time and gone back to what I was doing before. So make sure you start with using the system first and seeing what is actually working for you before you go and import a bunch of data from other places. Or you could also do what is recommended in building a second brain, which is to just archive all of your old data, have it available for you, but start fresh in Notion. And finally, my last tip, 
which is the most important one, is to begin with the end in mind. Ask yourself, what are you trying to accomplish by using this app and what is your goal? You are never gonna have a perfect organization system and going into this with the hope that you're gonna be building your dream notion that is a command center for your entire life is not going to negate the fact that our time on earth is limited. And no matter how efficient or productive your work systems are, there will always be more to do within your lifetime than you are physically capable of. So know what your priorities are, build your notion around that, and get on with actually living your life. Now I know notion can be a little bit overwhelming in the beginning, so if you do want to kickstart, I finally have my entire notion system in a template available for download. You can check it out in the description box below. This was highly requested, so I'm hoping it'll help out some of you. And if you want to learn more about how I use Notion myself, you can check out this video next.